This VizCast will look at the broadcast of a radio signal as an example of some properties of electromagnetic waves. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Let's interpret what this question is asking. It's talking about a radio signal and that's an example of an electromagnetic wave. Just like light or microwave radiation, all of these are examples of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. The properties that we're interested in for this particular question are the wavelength of this particular electromagnetic wave and the intensity of the wave and the field strength, in this case the electric field strength of the wave and in this case maybe what those two things are um, as, a, as a function of the distance involved from where they've been produced. We're told here there's a transmitter of these waves and at some distance from the city center and we want to know something about the intensity and field strength um, at some distance from that transmission point. A diagram might be useful in our development stage. So here's Mount Dandenong with some transmission tower at the top radiating out some electromagnetic waves and over here some distance away is the city center. And so these electromagnetic waves will be coming out in all directions from our transmission tower and what we're concerned with is at some distance here, which we're told is 50 kilometers, something about the wave properties out there. Uh, the first part of the question is actually asking us about a wavelength, so we might have to remember for electromagnetic waves there's a relationship between the speed of the wave, which is the speed of light, the frequency of the wave, and the wavelength of the wave. And so that will be important perhaps for us to determine what the wavelength is. We're also being asked about the intensity, and the intensity uh, of a wave, uh, electromagnetic wave, is related to this thing called the pointing vector, which has to do with the cross product of the electric and magnetic fields that make up that electromagnetic wave. In fact, it's the cross product of those two vectors divided by mu naught here, the permeability of space. And often what we're interested in is not so much the vector nature of this pointing vector, we actually might like to know simply its amplitude. And because uh, for this wave propagating in free space here, E and B are at right angles to each other, this cross product here um, can simply be thought of as E times B and the angle between them being 90 degrees means we just need the amplitudes of those. Uh, and there's another relationship there that might be important and that is that the electric field actually relates to the magnetic field, the amplitude of those, simply by the speed of light. So these might be uh, properties that will be important for us uh, as we're calculating the, uh, the solutions to this problem. So let's move on to our evaluation and let's begin with first part of the problem here which is to find the wavelength of this particular signal. We can turn that C equals F lambda equation around to make the wavelength lambda the, uh, the subject of that formula. It's simply going to be C divided by F and we know the speed of light in free space here is 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second and the frequency we're told here is 102.7 megahertz. So let's put that there and then we do that calculation and we wind up with a number there of 2.9 meters and so there's our answer for the first part of the question. Now let's move on to the second part of this problem here which is to think about the intensity of the signal in the city center. So it's originating at this tower 50 kilometers away from the city center and this, this important concept here of intensity we need to remember what's the intensity actually asking us about. I said it was related to this well, it was given by this, this pointing vector here, um, this pointing vector S, E cross B over mu naught. Um, and what is this telling us? And if we look at this carefully, we'll see that this intensity here is really giving us something in units of power divided by area. It's really telling us the rate at which energy is, uh, is moving across a particular area. So if we know the total power, which we do, which is uh, our 56 kilowatts up here, then how much power per unit area do we have um, when we're 50 kilometers away from our, our transmission? So our intensity here, S, will be given by our power per unit area. And of course, when it's out here at 50 kilometers from the transmission point, this energy, this, this power in our radio wave 
has been mov moving out in all possible directions. Our, our antenna here has no directionality to it, certainly our question didn't indicate that, so um, our radio station is trying to broadcast uh, everywhere. Um, and so we can imagine that these, these waves as they come out are basically moving through larger and larger spherical surfaces where the power at any part of a particular sphere is the same at all points on that sphere. So what we really want to have here is a power divided by um, the surface area of a, sp of a sphere of some radius r. So for us that will be, uh, that's our 56 kilowatts, that's how much power we have in total, and that will be divided by the area of the sphere uh, with a radius of, of 50 kilometers. So the area of a sphere um, is 4 pi r squared, so I'll make that 4 pi times our 50 kilometers, and we'll keep everything here in SO units, squared. And then when we do that calculation, uh, we get a number here that's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6, uh, and that's going to be in watts per square meter. So that will be the intensity of this radio wave um, at the city center here, 50 kilometers away from where it was transmitted. And that would of course be the intensity of that radio wave at any point 50 kilometers away from that transmission tower. Now let's move on and look at the third part of this question, which is asking us about the electric field amplitude of the signal. And we already know the intensity of the signal where we're interested here at the city center. So we should be able to maybe relate that intensity back to an electric field because we know the intensity is given by the pointing vector here which relates to the electric field and the magnetic field but we have a relationship between those two as well. So given the, the, uh, the amplitude here of this pointing vector we know is uh, it's going to be EB over mu naught and we know that we could write B here as E over C but this is true so for B it must be 1 over C times E. That gives us E squared over mu naught C. Now in fact the value for this this pointing vector is going to be oscillating quite rapidly because the electric field in our electromagnetic wave here can be given by an amplitude multiplied by some oscillation of course. It's a, it's a wave. We can write that in the usual form Kx minus omega t where remember K here is our wave number, 2 pi over lambda, and omega is the angular frequency. But this thing's going to be oscillating up and down quite rapidly. We don't want to be concerned about that. This, this value here we have for our power must be, in fact, the average power, not, not the instantaneous oscillations of these. So really we want to have here the average of this. Now mu naught and C don't change, but the electric field is oscillating rapidly. And it turns out we really want to take the average of sine squared and the average of sine squared turns out quite nicely and easily, and you've probably seen it before, um, averages out to a half over time. So that means that the average power that we have here, the average intensity I should say that we have here, will actually be given by a half the electric field amplitude squared over mu naught c. So we've taken out that rapid time fluctuation, remember it was a frequency of 102.7 megahertz, so 102.7 million times a second. This electric field's going from, from zero up to maximum, back down to minimum, back to zero. Um, on average, we get a half of the amplitude squared of that. And now we can just rearrange that particular expression to figure out that the amplitude of our electric field here um, must be given by two times mu naught C times the intensity square root of all of that, and we have all of these values, 2 times, if you look up the permeability, it's 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6 in SI units, it's speed of light, 3 by 10 to the 8, and our intensity that we had before, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6, and we want to take the square root of that entire thing, and you do that calculation, and we find a value there of 0 0.037 volts per meter, or we could write that more neatly as 37 millivolts per meter as our electric field amplitude of this radio wave at the city center. A little check here with our assessment step here. Uh, what about the wavelength that we calculated, 2.9 meters? Um, that seems reasonable, given that if we look up what the electromagnetic spectrum looks like, radio waves, um, it's a fairly large part of the spectrum that we classify as radio waves, um, are anywhere basically from from meters up to kilometers. 
in wavelengths. So we've got something here of, of several meters. That seems reasonable for a radio wave. Um, what about uh, this intensity here? Yes, well, we've got to remember we had 56 kilowatts at the actual transmission point, but we've gone out 50 kilometers. So although we didn't calculate it explicitly, the area of a 50 kilometer radius sphere, which is a fairly easy calculation, it's basically the bottom line of the calculation we did just up here, that turns out to be something of order 10 to the 10 square meters. So when we had 56 kilowatts and we're dividing that across an area of about 10 to the 10 square meters, uh, it actually turns out to be the right order of magnitude to wind up with something in the order of, of microwatts per square meter, which is indeed what we had. And this last step here, what this electric field amplitude looks like a particularly small field, 37 millivolts per meter. Um, certainly compared to other fields that you might have calculated, that's quite small. And it's worth having a, a little check, maybe uh, offline if you will, um, by looking up, say, what kind of signal strength can a radio uh, receiver actually amplify up. Um, a nice comparison is what kind of signal can a, can a mobile phone, um, which operates on similar technology, of course. And this is indeed a large enough signal that, that a standard radio receiver can, can receive an electric field of this amplitude and, and amplify up um, to be an audible radio signal.